I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just to say I'm alright. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright. I've seen a lot of change. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Sylvia and Corey Bitanga. That's us. Yeah. Today we are doing a video that has been highly requested. How was life after marriage? We have our our neighbors who have trucks. Yeah, we, we, we just live uh, nearby. Our, is it a construction site? Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. So due to public demand, we've decided to do this video right yeah you know we've told you guys our love story and our wedding and everyone's like oh yeah oh, me. <laughs> we love you guys for that but some of you are like yeah cute but what's the reality of marriage in a cross-cultural marriage or even interracial marriage yeah yeah today we are gonna tell you a little bit how it is to be married to someone who is not from your culture, who was raised completely differently. There's some challenges. Some are humorous and some are hard to get through. But we try to just make the best of it when things come up and work through them. Yes. I think I'm gonna let <laughs> Mr. Handsome here go first with um, what was something that you didn't expect going into marriage with me. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, for me, for me, for me, um, I have like lots of things to uh, to say, but I, I don't know. I'll just, uh, the way it comes, you know. So first of all, it's the communication part of it in a marriage. So I never used to communicate a lot uh even like growing up in our in our family we never used to like give more like deep in deep basic info information yeah it was just not basic. deep <laughs> basic. <laughs> basic it's like <laughs> for him it's deep for me it's basic it's like uh maybe your family could be calling you like hi core when are you coming <laughs> <laughs> what time are you coming home? I'll be like, maybe at night. Yeah, that's it. At night for me, it can be between 7 to even 12 of midnight. So, But in this marriage, like in a marriage, I, I think it works. It's not just in our marriage, but uh, in most marriages, it's always like you have to specify the time, you know. If it's 7, it should be 7. If it's 11, it should be 11. Mm -hmm. Like you have to communicate well, well, well. Yeah. I think it's important, communication is important because if you don't communicate, then it leaves for like you assume things and most times your assumptions are not right. So, and it also helps with when the supper is waiting and I know when he'll be coming home. <laughs> yeah, you know, before <laughs> I got married, it's like, um, you know, bachelor life. You just make supper anytime that you feel like, uh, and you can make supper or even lunch or even breakfast and it doesn't mean that you have to take it right away uh, like when you feel like this is the right moment that i want to eat that's it but you know in a marriage it's like when it's supper time it's supper time even if you're not hungry <laughs> you come and eat <laughs> and i think too you know both of us we were single for quite a while yeah it's not like we got married in our late teens or early 20s we were mid to late 20s so we both had experienced life living on our own and having our own schedule doing our own thing so i think that combined is um a challenge that 
we work on daily to communicate and work as a team not as individuals yeah so back to you what okay for me first it's like communication so what about you like uh what are some of the things that uh it has surprised you being in a marriage you know um probably the lack of communication surprised me um but i think to just the like the whole being a wife thing whereby it's like supper comes around five times a day <laughs> not really but it's like i'm always thinking of what to make obviously living alone you know you just grab a little snack and go to bed here it's like i need to make a whole meal like it needs to have starch vegetables protein like the whole i need to construct a meal with at least those three things so i feel like i'm constantly thinking of what to make to eat and on a limited budget it's sometimes hard to figure all of that out but i'm learning anyway yeah yeah so apart from communication another thing is time you know uh, in a marriage i didn't expect to be spending time like with families like you know <laughs> so as time goes by this is something that uh it's, it's like a it was like a big change for me like i used to spend time with friends and maybe alone going out uh by the lake to just uh, enjoy the breeze but now uh, in marriage you find that there's this thing that we call family time so you have to create time for your family that's the most important thing yeah 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 it was a it was, it was a, also a change for me like I think to um, coming from different cultures and how like just the expectations of what you expect out of a marriage and sometimes it doesn't add up to that and so there's this balancing act of not trying to change your partner but also trying to better your marriage making it something better um so i think for me that was a that was a big change because coming from my Mennonite culture, obviously, it was more conservative and the men kind of all behave a certain way. No, that's not true. Some are not good, genuinely not good, and most are really good. Um, so for me, some things maybe that I had expect expected from him, like... Um, yeah, being more family oriented or, or kind of not being with the bros or whatever um but there's still a time for that obviously there's there's a time for um you know guy time and girl time but yeah just blending that thing of having friends as couples rather than um maybe hanging out with people who are not in our stage of life but actually finding other couples to hang out with that kind of have that you click with that we have common interests in it's actually kind of hard to find Cynthia yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay like for me I, I feel like uh, finding them it's not um, hard but now clicking with them mm -hmm. there's now another another thing you know yeah to find someone that you can truly like just be yourself with and have a good time with them but I think it it requires like uh, time time and just effort you know studying new friendships it just takes effort yeah a lot of effort to get to know them and have friends as couples yeah so another thing that uh, i want to talk about is argument, <laughs> yeah, argument. in marriage we argue yeah. at times <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't know english so i always win okay he knows english <laughs> But you can't think English very but fast. It, I'm a Kenyan. I, all my life it has, it has been like Swahili, Swahili, Swahili. But now to argue in English, it's... Hey. I'm usually the winner. <laughs> Imagine until nowadays, I, when I dream, I dream in English. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> How do our arguments usually go? <laughs> it's something I... I <laughs> we are both 
Okay, we are both very passionate people and a little bit stubborn. Yeah, you know, I'm a QC and you know, for, for, for my Kenyan people. Anga. <laughs> anga. 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 <laughs> no, but you do control your anger a lot. I think for for me, I usually overreact and he underreacts because he knows like he can get really angry so he doesn't want to take it there. So he underreacts as far as like when there's a confrontation, he would much rather walk away and take time to cool down and then come back. For me, I want to sort things now. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, for me, it's like when I'm up here, <laughs> don't come up here. <laughs> for some people, when they're up here, you have to come up here. I think we, we usually handle it differently. However, the longer we're married, I think my advice would be from what we've experienced to other couples out there especially cross-cultural just don't take yourself too seriously so for us sometimes when we are in the middle of an argument we sometimes we just start laughing just because the way i'm seeing things it makes sense to me the way he's seeing things it makes sense to him and sometimes you just have to not take yourself so seriously and just conclude that it's a cultural difference. And the more you can just conclude like, okay, Sawai, okay, it's a cultural difference. The more you can live in peace together. Okay, just to add something on that, um, you know, uh, for me personally, when I'm up here and she's up here, the best, uh, the thing that I, I try to do is to I, I always ask for a me time, you know, just uh, time out, time, time, <clears throat> just having my time alone, you know, so that I come from up here to down here, so that uh, we can maybe talk later. Mm -hmm. By that time, I think things will be uh, the argument of it will have been. Down it will here, like, have cooled off, cool, yeah. yeah. And I think it's better that way um, because I think the way I was raised, we could just solve things right then and there. But at times, you could say things you didn't mean or like say things out of anger that later you regret. So I think for me, that's something I still struggle with is when I get angry, saying things I regret, as in him, he just goes silent. Um, but I think one thing also that helps is if you have a scenario where you're going to let it cool down and talk about it later, um, one thing that we've tried to do is tell the other person when you'll be talking. Don't just walk away and give them the silent treatment, leaving them alone. But at times he'll tell me like, I'll talk with you tomorrow morning before I go to work. But right now... I just need space. And make sure you don't leave things unsolved. Yeah. Always make sure you talk things out. Yeah. That's the only way to... To solve it. To solve it. Yeah. yeah. And don't just um, go from an argument and now one goes to have space. Then when you come together, you just have like... <laughs> twa twa! And you forget about the rest. Make sure that you take time to talk about it and not just connect physically, but you sit down and you work through it verbally. Then you continue from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that has, that has worked the best for us. And I know the temptation is there when you're upset to, you don't even want to tell them when you'll talk to them again, just because you want them to feel that silent treatment. But if you truly need space and you truly want to talk it out just make sure to tell your partner right now i'm upset i'll talk to you tomorrow before i go to work then keep your word and then the other partner that really like me really wants to hash it out i have to step back and give him that space and also cool down myself so that you can have an adult conversation yeah yeah so <clears throat> Like I said, like, I have so many things to talk about, uh, you know, marriage life. So another thing that I, that I want to talk about is for them, after supper, they always have like a, like a family time. 
-hmm. where they just sit all the families and no phones like you just like engage yourself into like a conversation like how was your day not even um, like devotional or reading the bible but just talking how how your day was and just like maybe you'll have a story plan. of something that happened that yeah. day just connecting yeah so for us you know we didn't have that ka, ka thing but it was a very big uh thing that um i came to love it by the way yeah i enjoy it so much it's it's more better than just uh spending your time on phones and things like that like yeah 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 i think for me that's uh that's a big thing that i had to get used to kind of we try to meet in the middle um but for him he grew up mostly like you eat supper while you're watching tv then bara bara we everyone goes to bed like no one is really talking a lot um so for me that's something that at times i really miss because it, i know it's a bad habit we have but most of the time we eat supper while we watch like Movie, a show yeah. or an episode or something like that or maybe your channel you as a subscriber <laughs> yeah we watch a lot of youtube channels and netflix some different shows um so at times i just like to tell him let's let's just turn it off tonight and let's just talk while we eat and it's incredible like the stories that come up of something that happened during the day that you never even thought of to tell them until you put your phones away and the tv is off then you have time to talk but we still don't do it as often as we should but we are learning you are still young so yeah. as time goes by it's when we get to learn more we are we are young and sometimes very immature like tom and jerry <laughs> yeah tommy jerry, <laughs> jerry. <laughs> <laughs> what i really know is we really love each other and people who really love each other they really fight at times <laughs> i have had a friend recently who said her and her husband have never yelled at each other i aspire to be that like sounds amazing <laughs> sounds amazing we always tell each other we're going to be together forever and we're the only two people who can make it either really good or really bad it's our choice so we learn every day and it keeps getting better like a small baby learning how to you know to work yeah we learn to know each other better understand each other better yeah the likes and the dislikes and yeah. just so many things yeah yeah so i think another thing for me in cultural difference um that surprised me was the way that they spend holidays to like not together <laughs> like um one person can go to kisi the other person doesn't show up or maybe a sister shows up with the kids but no husband and that's something in my culture that I'm very much not used to like for christmas especially um we would all go to our parents house once your parents have kids that are old enough to be married and having their own kids you start your own christmas before that we always went to my grandparents house for christmas until we were old enough to have my parents started our own christmas so yeah that's something that kind of surprised me is the way that um his family they were not all together and that might not even be a cultural difference it might be no, a family we were we were together like in spirit <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah you know for us like uh the africans i think they can also uh my fellow africans can relate to this during christmas like people have different uh plans so i remember back 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 the people of uh 1990s going going back you know what i mean not the 2000 kids but the 1990s yeah so we used to like have this thing where during christmas we all go back to our grandma's grandparents home and we spend like a like a like a family together it used to happen 
So maybe it's more your family thing. Whereby your dad goes to KC, your mom stays here and cooks, some of the kids come. Try to balance. <clears throat> You know when yeah. mom mom uh, is here and mm -hmm. dad is at, at home, like he's trying to make things work. Well, you know, for on my dad's side, uh, my dad is a is an orphan, you know, and him he has to be there to make sure like uh, like his brothers and. Mm -hmm brothers ways and I think for just... us we would all go then with him oh, okay. but like having my dad not be there for Christmas like what it would never happen like we would if my dad would go somewhere then the rest of the family we would go where he goes so that we can be together as a family those are just a few of the things that um, I experienced uh, in marriage life we get to know each other we learn how to work together and I think when you fight for each other, um, it shows that you care about each other. And this goes to the uh, cross-cultural uh, relationship. Yeah. Always try to meet in the middle. It's very, very important. Not just like being on one side, like her being in Africa, she has to do everything how we, the Africans, do it. At times, it will be like a very big burden for her to just to come and adopt like the African. So in this type of marriage, you have to like balance like... It has to be a 50-50 where you both come together sacrificing part of who you are really. Yeah. Like I've, sacri I've sacrificed part of who I am to be in his world. And he's done the same for me and I'm sure he'll continue to do it if he ever doesn't live in Kenya. He'll understand how it is to live in a culture where you're constantly surprised by things. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I really love um, about your mother mm -hmm. is she sells grains at the market and ever since we've been married she's been coming here and just not even like telling me, but just bringing a big basket of vegetables and fruits and grains and ground nuts and so many things. Watermelon and tomatoes, yeah. tomatoes. Like just so many things, like she'll drop it off and sometimes it was just what we needed. Um, so that's one thing I've been really amazed with his family is how they've accepted me in all my weirdness and like they care for me like their own daughter and it really means a lot it means a lot i remember when i was staying at the house before we were married um i got sick at one point and imagine they they put in a like a actual toilet because we had the one with the hole in the ground they went they put no, in the actual not the hole in the ground what was it you know it has that car Oh yeah, that's it's different right. Different from the hole. That's right. It had like a toilet in the ground. One of those bowls. If you're Kenyan, you understand. Yeah. For the rest of you, just picture the seat of the toilet sitting in the ground. No, then you just squat over. No, you it. just squat. You do your thing. Then you pour water, uh -huh. and it goes. Yeah. It but looks like the toilet bowl is concreted into the level with the ground. Yeah then you squat it's a unique situation and anyway it, it used to be so hard for for her you know especially when you're getting used to like kenyan food and diet and there's like diarrhea in the building <laughs> it used to be so hard they completely installed a real toilet for me not only that they even put a hot wa hot water heater shower yeah. head like so that i could have hot water to shower they've just gone like the extra mile to to make me comfortable and to help me to fit into their culture so yeah his family has done so much um to make me feel welcomed and to help me to blend in to his culture but it's definitely a 50 50 act yeah yeah so we're getting ready to close out this video but i have one question for my husband from the comment section Honey, why do I talk with a uh, kind of a Kenyan accent? It comes so natural, you know, Yeah. being uh, in an area. Even, for example, if I go to 
a different tribe here in Kenya, Amakisi, I got to live with the lawyers. After some time, I have to develop the lawyer accent. Like one of my friends, she's a Kenyan, she moved to Uganda. She has yeah. adapted to that. I was so surprised, like, just a few months Shout out later. Shout Winnie. Winnie, she speaks English, but not the Kenyan English, but the Ugandan English, you know. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that was her. So that's the only thing yeah. I can say for you guys. The answer to it is simply that when you live here, I'm going on six years now. You hear this accent all the time. And when I hear it, it automatically changes. I'm not even aware when it changes. And then when I'm alone or I'm talking to someone from home, I switch to the American because that's what I'm hearing. Can you speak the American English? It's kind of hard when... <laughs> <laughs> no, speak to your American people. Hi guys, how is everyone doing today? No, that's a Kenya. No, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, how is everyone doing today? No, I can everyone. hear everything. Yeah. But you can also hear English like... No, like there's Americans. something like water. Yeah, yeah I oh, water. I need some water. Does anyone drink. want water? Yeah. Yeah. The R's. If you think Mazungus talk... If you think Mazungus talk, yeah. talk funny, the African side effect. <laughs> then just realize it's the R's. Okay, now I'm talking with my American. Someone was like, I liked your American accent. Where did it go to? <laughs> Chill, sister. Uh, the R's, that's where it's at. Water. No, water. He, I'm here running. we drink water. Water. I'm running. No, we are running. Ra. Yeah. Ra. <laughs> so anyway i just want to address that a little bit because so many of you have been asking like it's funny she's in the house talking with a american accent then she goes outside and immediately she switches to kenyan accent honestly i don't even realize when it happens but you also understand my english better when i use your accent Cindy. yeah i do yeah and you know right now i'm uh, a confused element with your um Kenyan accent, you know, people are always like, ah, she's, uh, she's one of us. Mzungu me too. So, <laughs> yeah, hi, how you doing? Uh-huh. In Kenya, when someone yells at you like, Mzungu, how are you? They are like mocking how we talk. I really don't like that. I always I tell them, that. Omera, Birogoi. <laughs> so they start laughing. <laughs> That's yeah, my but phrase. okay, okay. For me, if I want to like, um, even to when she's on a phone call with your nieces, right? Mm -hmm. And I try to talk to the to her nieces. They don't get it. They don't get it until I'm like, like, "Hi, how you doing? Hi, hi, kids." And then they get it. <laughs> and then they they get it. Even Siri. <laughs> yeah, even Siri. I'll be like, I want to uh, ask something. Or just do like uh, a research, like How's asking the Siri, how is the weather? So I have to be like, hi Siri, how is the weather today? <laughs> <laughs> and then it gets it. But if he just talks in his Kenyan accent, it doesn't get uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really need a, an African Siri. <laughs> an African Siri. <laughs> Even just here in Kenya, if you go to Mombasa mm. with the Swahili, like uh, the Swahili... He, in Kisumu, it's different with the Swahili in Mombasa. Mm. So if you go to Mombasa for even a week, you'll be having <laughs> yeah. the coastal yeah. in Swahili. Like, so don't Kiswahili come for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Don't come for yeah. me. I've been here for almost six years. So you just adapt. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. yeah, I hope this video showed you a little bit that... Yes, we had a movie-like love story, amazing wedding, but we are a normal couple. We have arguments, we have fights, and we work through them. Yeah. Yeah. And we love each other. We are here once. Yes, very much so. Guys, I'm going to end the video here today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Peace. Uh-oh. Hello. Uh, hi, hi. Yes, uh, I'm the king. <coughs>
She's the cop cop. <coughs> Corona incoming. Oh. Uh -oh. At least there's wind. I'm okay. so hot. Good morning. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. Uh -oh. You know we've told you. <laughs> Is that the right time? I don't know. Bye. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> God bye. Yeah. <laughs> to be married. Uh -oh. Yeah. To be married. <laughs> so. You know. Yeah, and I think too, um, <clears throat> we'll be in the middle of a dis- <laughs> we'll be in the middle of a- we'll be Honey, in the middle what's of wrong, a dis- what's wrong? I'm waiting for you to compose yourself so I can- No, for me I'm okay, you keep on- <laughs> Your family gets to, like my family- <laughs> what am I even talking about? 